Welcome back everyone. Hope that all is well with you and that you had a productive crafting experience since last we met. Where were we? Between the last video and this one, there were five other videos that were recorded and the person who recorded them called me two days ago to tell me that the SD card is corrupted and the videos are gone. And so we must move on. I'm sure most of the content loss was about socks and there was even a dramatic moment when I discovered a broken needle. A needle unfortunately not given an honorable burial but given an honorable mention. Now we will get back to socks but first let's talk about hats. I've been bitten by the hat bug. Remember this? Well actually you can't since the video where this was introduced is gone 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 my mom knitted the blue part of this hat and decided that she wanted a warmer hat rather than redo on smaller needles to make a tighter and therefore warmer hat she wanted a lined hat and so i had the brilliant idea of knitting an additional hat onto it my thinking is two layers of knitting are two layers of knitting, excuse me, are warmer than one. So what did I do? I promptly picked up the hat and started knitting in this direction. Yes, you guessed it. That was not the way to do it. Yes, it can be done that way, but after all your knitting, when you fold the hat down, ta-da, you have an open tube. You would have this an open tube that you must now find a cute way to close. So I looked at the hat and realized that what you really needed was two hats each going in a different direction. Here let me show you. One hat has to go this way and the second hat has to go that way so that when you're done and you put one inside of the other you have a lined hat. So what did I do? I stuck my circular needle into the bottom of the ribbing that she had done and I started a hat going in this direction. Guess what I found? I looked at it and what, what did I see? I saw with my own eyes that though we use the same needle, my tension and her tension were not a match. My knit stitches are tight. My mother's are relaxed. Now here is my thinking. It's a lined hat. So the inside hat should be smaller, okay, than her looser or more relaxed knitting, right? Because hers will be the outer hat. So this is the point where you either nod your head, all right, or you shake your head and go, oh no. Well, after I finished my ribbing, I started the stockinette part of the hat and I still couldn't get the same, not even close to hers. I was like, did she use another needle? But she didn't because I'm the one who bought the needle. So what I did, I ran over to my flatbed knitting machine. It, the ribbon was on it and I hung the hat on both the um, front bed and the back bed and I eyeballed the stitches and guessed the tension that the hat should be knitted at to see how close I could come. Boy, I can see folk going, you guess tension? Ooh, tension? Well, tension be damned. I guess right and I got it, okay? When I put this hat that I have done into hers, it works beautifully, okay? Now tell me that doesn't look good. And now I'm going to put them back on the needles and I'm going to finish the crown, both ends, okay, by hand, okay? Now you know I can't finish too soon as my mom eyes me every time she sees me. You, you know that look moms give you a, hmm, aren't you finished yet? But soon it will be done. After looking at my mom's hat, I had a desire to make more hats. So what did I do? I said, I want to make hats, but I really don't want to hand knit stockinette. I find that kind of knitting boring. So I'll use the flatbed for this boring part. 
So what did I do? I made a tube on the flatbed in this yarn. This is yarn I bought from Knit Picks. No, it wasn't this in this color. It was plain, that plain cream. And I dyed it a variety of colors till I have this color combo that I loathe, okay? But the hat is not for me. I think I can find someone I know who will like this hat. I've already put my circular needle in so I can do the rib and this will be the bottom of the hat and what I'll do is the end that can unravel is up here I will just take the yarn carry it up here and do my rib okay um, I do my ribs by hand because the flatbread machines even though when it has a ribber the rib it does is flat it's not circular and I don't like seams in the things that I create so most of my ribs are done by hand with one exception and that's um, socks but we'll get to that later okay um, you know now that I'm I'm looking at the circular needle down here I think I'll use my higher higher double points instead because this looks like too much needle for so few a number of stitches because then I'll end up pulling and I'm going to do higher higher now after I do the ribbon by hand I will then turn it around and I will knit the crown but I'm trying to think of a crown that's a little different than something I have done before you know I want something new what kinds of crowns have I done let's see I've done the ones where you reduce the stitches to the point where you can cinch or just cast off. Uh, I've done the crown, excuse me, I've done the crowns where you reduce the number of stitches, whether you knit two together, whatever, until you have fewer stitches and you can just cinch. But I really don't like that look. Maybe I should throw some cables or something in there to make it a little bit more interesting but we will see, okay? Now, let me talk about this hat. This is a hat I made. I still have this little dangly thing to cut off. It started life as a bag, <laughs> okay? So, what happened? It didn't, it didn't have the body or the size I wanted when I felted it. So when I turned it upside down, because it was a this was supposed to be a bag, but I turned it this way. I had a hat. So, a hat it's going to be. Now, how did I get to this? I knitted some yarn I bought from Joann's. It's 100% wool for felting. I think it's by Lion Brand, but don't quote me. It knits beautifully on the bulky flatbed knitting machine. And then I took it. I said, let me go and felt it. I've never felted anything before in my life. Let me tell you, felting is not for the faint of heart. I started out with boiling water and a pot that was too small and some soap. When that water started sloshing and looked like it was going to burn me, I said, uh-uh, no. There has to be a better way. So I went to YouTube and I found the video where the felting took place in a washing machine. So immediately, I went downstairs to the washing machine. I threw the hat in, added some soap, washed in hot water. It shrank beautifully. I mean, look how smooth. It actually looks as though I know what I was doing. So hat was born, okay? I like the look but the feel is really, really sturdy. And I want to see if I can make a hat that after felting is a little softer. Did I say a little softer? I misspoke. I want a felted hat that is a lot softer. So I am working on this one. Okay, here is this one and I'm making it from this yarn. Can you see that? 
Palette is a fingering weight yarn that I bought on the internet. It's probably from Knit Picks. Yes, it's from Knit Picks. And as you can, let me tell you what I did. I used the cast on um, fabric and then I just started knitting live stitches. Okay. At some point, I'm going to remove this knitted fabric because it's waste and I'll reuse it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, um, some of the yarn through the live stitches and that's my edge. Okay. I'm, ho I'm working on the crown now um, with my favorite. Every higher, higher double point is my favorite. Okay. And I started out with circular needles, okay? Because there were a lot of stitches. I started out with a 40 inch higher, higher circular. Then I switched to a 24 inch chai gu. Now I'm back to um, some higher, higher double points. And um, one thing you're probably asking, what are these little brown pieces of yarn hair? I was using these little circles for um, um, stitch markers and I was on the train and I didn't realize that some of them fell off. So I came around and I'm like, wait a minute, what? So I had no choice. I took some of this, I cut it and um, I just stuck them on the needles and that instant stitch marker um, so as I said I'm going to felt this I switch needles I know I heard the sound of somebody out there fainting going oh my god she's just going from one needle to another these needles are from different companies and though they have the same sizing on them they knit different size stitches I'm hoping that um, since it's going to be felted that it really isn't going to be noticeable I'm at the point of the crown where I'm wondering if it's worth it what should I do next should I continue decreasing or should I just cinch it I'm not really sure what do you think um, I heard that person out there who said and what did the pattern say there is no pattern uh, it's a stock in that hat that's going to be felted. After it felt, I'll know how to adjust it to make it smaller or larger. That's as close to pattern as I'm going to get. And with the size of my family, believe me, there is a head that this will fit once I've done felting. Okay? And is that all about felting? No. I knit this beret. I almost forgot. Okay, I have this beret and I was thinking of frogging it, but I like the way the top looks. Look at it. It looks handmade. For a minute there, I actually convinced myself I did this by hand. The swirl is very nice, but now that I'm looking at it, these are short rows on a knitting machine. Now, I did the ribbing by hand, and as you can see, even though it's a, what's that, a fingering weight yarn? I did I am a really tight knitter but I'm thinking rather than frogging I'm going to finish this okay I'm not sure how the ribbing will felt if it'll be too hard not hard enough but I've done all this work so let's see and just pray that the rib will be as soft and and as flexible as I would like it to be. Now for all you felters out there, what do you think? Because I would, I could frog it, but I re I've put in so much work, maybe it's worth it just to try. And if it doesn't work, I'll cut it up and make coasters or something, okay? Now that reminds me, I have a Babel hat. I think that's the name. Remember the hat with all the little sheepies on them? Now I had to adjust the pattern because as you can see, I don't have any, I have very little hair up there. I cut my hair off. It's too much trouble. I don't want to be bothered. So I had to adjust 
and some of the sheep are a little bigger or smaller okay I started this in 2017 and I'm looking at it now and I actually finished the top looks nothing like the instructions that were online I can't follow directions it just doesn't work I plan to wear this to Rhinebeck but that never happened hmm. I'm thinking that though I hand knitted this one all the way and the sheep were down it's the crown I don't like okay so maybe I'll take it out you know what let me try it let's see what does it look like oh now I know why I didn't like it I wanted the sheepies to be down here but they're all the way up here what do you think maybe I can cut off you know and then add to the top or hmm, oh no definitely not that well we will see it's something I can work on okay let's see do I have any more hats yes one um, I did this edging it's supposed to be a ribbing by hand and I've been looking for ribbed edgings that don't look like rib. If anyone can give me hints and tips as to where I could find them, because one by one, two by two, that's boring. And I know I'm going to be, I know I'm going to get tired of it. Now, what I'm trying to figure out, because let's see, lots of string, but you see, it fits my head beautifully. And what I'm trying to figure out is how to finish it. I was thinking of color, you know, like a nice bright yellow, but then that would kind of make it a bullseye hat, wouldn't it? What do I mean by bullseye? You know, those targets you see, all this white space, and then there's a big round colored circle in the middle. And if I do that, hmm, I'm, hmm, I may need to give this one some thought because I really don't want a target hat. Because if I have a hat, it's this plain color, and then with the color in the middle, everyone is going to go, oh, a Target hat. And I'm going to get tired of hearing that really, really fast. But I do like the fact that it's a rib, but it doesn't look like a rib. And part of that is because I misunderstood the directions, but I like the way this came out, okay? But I'm going to have to take a think, you know, you imagine a deep think about a hat well it's a hat and I will do something with it um, and I had another hat oh I don't know what I did with it but we can still go I found a hat pattern a free hat pattern online and it's for a short road hat made with garter stitch and I think it would be perfect for this yarn I love this yarn. It is sold in Joann's. Don't ask me what its name, but it's designed to do what my favorite thing for yarn to do is pull. Some people call it flashing. As usual, I'm not overly concerned about gauge. I just want to see what a hat will in this will look like. I'm going to hand knit this one all the way just to see if I'm happy with it. I'll try it on the knitting machine as a circular hat if I like what I see, okay? Have you noticed the obsession with circular knitting? I never realized that I do not like seams in my knits. That's probably why I knit socks and why I rib by hand. Do I, knit, do I knit socks completely by hand? Not for a long time. I have no clue what happened to the socks that I had knit all the way, but it was nothing to brag about, okay? And as everyone in my family always needs socks and there is no way I can keep up by hand, I work on the machine. But I think I'm really, really going to enjoy this, okay? so. We'll get, I've started a little on socks. We'll get to socks in the next video. But hopefully by then, this will be on the needles. Because I love, look at the colors. Look at that. 
oh my god i love yarn that when you look at it you need to put shades on in order to see it but enough for today thank you for visiting with me and i'll catch you next time bye